Welcome to today's video lecture covering cellular growth, division, and reproduction. So today we're going to talk about the two major limitations to cell size and why cells can only be small. We're also going to talk about cellular division and how that relates to the limitations in cell size. And then talk about cellular reproduction, which is basically a production of um, a piece of cellular division. The two different types of cellular reproduction being asexual and sexual reproduction. So let's start with those limitations to cell size. The first limitation to cell size is information overload. <clears throat> now, our DNA within our cells control what goes on within our cells. There is only a certain amount of DNA within our cells and you cannot have more. So a cell is kind of like a school. The larger the school is, the more administrators you get because you need to have those administrators to control this um, and handle the information with the students, with the teachers, and everything. We can't add that DNA. So there's only a certain size of that DNA can control. After that point, we get too much information that's needed within the cell, and the DNA can't control that. So the cell needs to remain small to, to handle all of the information that the DNA is able to require, is able to give out. If not, the DNA can't give out enough information for the cell, and the cell stops functioning. So information overload is the first limitation to cell size. The second one is the exchange of materials. Now if you think about the size of a city, the larger the city, the more roads you have in and out. If you have a city that's growing very rapidly and you don't get the roads in and out of the city that you need, what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a lot of backup. That happens in cells also. Cells require a certain amount of nutrients for each amount of volume and they also produce a certain amount of waste for that amount of volume. They have to get those materials in and out of the cell, and the only way to do that is within the cell, is through the cell membrane. Now the cell membrane within it has transport proteins that help those things go back and forth. If you remember back to our cells unit and the cell membrane, the purpose of the cell membrane is to control what goes in and out of the cell. So it can control those nutrients coming in and that waste coming out. The larger the cell, the more demand on the cell membrane and it can't handle the demands at its, once it reaches a certain point. And so that's the second limitation to uh, cell size and the reason why cells have to be small. So when cells are small, or cells start getting bigger, they will divide to make themselves smaller and make themselves more efficient. And I'm going to talk about the efficiency here in just a minute. We're going to look at the different sizes of the cell. So let's pretend these boxes are cells. This would be a one centimeter cube box. This would be a, a box that has a two centimeter side. And this would be a box that has a six centimeter side. Now the surface area of this box right here would be six centimeters squared. Because what you're doing is you're going to multiply the length times the width of each side and add them up. Each side has one centimeter by one centimeter, so each side would be one centimeter squared. And when you add up all those six sides, you get six centimeters squared. Now to get the volume, you multiply length times width times height. So one times one times one would give us a volume of one centimeter cubed. Now the important piece here to look at is going to be that surface area to volume ratio. So for each one centimeter of volume, there, is, there are six centimeters cubed. So we have a six to one ratio in a small one centimeter cube box. Now, if we look at the second one, we have two centimeters on each side. So it's two by two which is a four centimeter on each side, add up the six sides, that gives us a 24 centimeter squared box. And the volume, two centimeters by two centimeters by two centimeters, gives us an eight centimeter cubed box. 
And if we take a look at that surface area to volume ratio, it's a three to one ratio. So you're noticing that the surface area is decreasing faster, or I should say the volume is increasing faster than the surface area is increasing. So if the volume is increasing faster than the surface area is increasing, that means that we're going to have higher demands on that cell membrane and eventually it's not going to be able to support the cell. Let's take a look at the surface area to volume ratio here. A six centimeter cube box has a 216 centimeter square and a 216 centimeter cube volume, which gives us a one to one ratio. Even higher demands on that cell membrane for that volume, which it may not be able to handle. So when a cell gets smaller, when it starts dividing, it takes the same amount of volume, it divides it in half, and you have a larger surface area now, because the smaller the cell, the smaller the surface area, and the larger the surface area to volume ratio is, and so you have a better ability to exchange those materials. So cell division helps with this. Now, cell division is very similar to our reproduction within the cells. We have asexual reproduction being the first one, and this is where you have one parent that produces multiple organisms that are identical to themselves. So the offspring through asexual reproduction are genetically identical to the parent. Okay. This occurs mostly in single-celled organisms, and there are very few multicellular organisms that actually go through cellular reproduction, um, asexual reproduction. This allows for organisms to reproduce very quickly, and it allows for those organisms to reproduce very quickly in an ideal environment. If you think about mold, mold actually takes and increases its volume very rapidly in warm, wet environments. So what happens is it goes through asexual reproduction, it produces lots of genetically identical cells, and you have more mold and you end up with a mold problem. The second type of cellular reproduction is sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is where you have two parents, they mix their DNA, DNA and you get a child that is, or an offspring, that is genetically different from the two parent cells. Okay? It contains a little bit of genetic information from each of the parents. This occurs mostly in multicellular organisms, and there are very few single-celled organisms that actually go through sexual reproduction. This allows for organisms to be genetically different from each other. This allows for species to be able to survive better in changing environments. Asexual reproduction allows for organisms to survive better in a stable environment, whereas sexual reproduction allows organisms to be able to adapt to different environments better and survive through different environments. So, this was our video lecture on cellular growth division and reproduction. And now you should be able to understand the limitations to cell growth, why cells need to divide, and the two major types of um, reproduction, being asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction.